We're back again with talk. Uh, our guest today is Bobby Castile, and he is in France, the country of France, and uh, where he's been living for how long, Bob? Uh, since uh, 2017. But I lived here before, uh, after um, uh, uh, nine, the 911 thing happened. Is uh, um, you know, you know, I organized the International Tribunal, <clears throat> and the International Tribunal. I had all experts of international law. I had Professor Francis Boyle with our charge with genocide for uh, uh, crimes against humanity uh, uh, and uh, holding political prisoners and prisoners of war in the United States today. And many people will say, ah, oh, you know, that, that shit happened a long time ago. And uh, I mean, Leonard Peltier is a prisoner of war. Not a political prisoner, he's a prisoner of war. And uh, uh, so uh, let me tell you why, okay? Or you want to talk about Peltier another time. You, you can do this statement in another Yeah, let's talk about him in another time. But hey, I, I just... So I just want to, I want to kind of try to follow your life, man, because like I want to try to you know like give a cohesive like uh, like how your life progressed from one thing to the next, you, you know, like a chronological thing. You know what I mean? You got out of prison. What year? You got out of prison in what eighty? Uh, November fourth, nineteen eighty-one. Eighty. You got out eighty-one. I had a mandatory release, and uh, well, when I got out, check this out. They, uh, like, like you know, I wear, like, a 32 waist, uh, you know, and, and they gave me, like, a 48 waist pair of pants, a big old jacket, and, and it was that, it was that polyester, like, if you look at it one way, it kind of looks gold and green, it depends how you look. I mean, I, I, they dressed me up like a clown. I had to take my shoelace out of my shoe to tie it up because they didn't give me a belt. So, so uh, then they, you know, they, they took me handcuffs and shackles, leg irons to the gate. Huh? I'm being released. And so they got me to the front gate. And you, you know how Marion is all the electronically controlled gates. I got to go through like five gates from R&R &R or that. Three, five gates. I don't remember, but there's a whole lot of them. They released and you I from Marion. You got released from uh, Marion, right? From Marion, yeah. That's crazy. Uh, so, so uh, I go halfway house. And, uh, Did you go to a halfway and, house? Uh, it is. Yeah, no, never, never. Straight to the home. Uh, straight home. Straight home. So anyway, they, uh, the handcuffs and shackles to the front gate, and then uh, we're at the, the front door you know, to walk out, and they wait. They told me, wait a minute. And I got it like a 15-minute wait, and they said, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, to 0, okay. 12 o'clock, they let me out the door. They gave me an envelope. It's got $50 and a bus ticket uh, uh, from St. Louis uh, 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 to uh, uh, the bus ticket is to St. Louis, as from St. Louis uh, to Fresno, California. So I, uh, 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 there's a taxi cab waiting for me outside, and it just takes you right downtown. I mean, it's a you know a five minute ride to uh, to the bus station. So so they uh, you know I'm I'm you know I'm just checking it out. I can't believe it. So the, the cab driver, he pulls up, and there, you know, four cop cars. And the bus driver says, $25. We just, we just went around the block and got me here. And the, the, the sheriff looks in and said, we got a problem here? I said, no. Give him the money. No Fuck problem. Yeah. So wait a minute. I hear the Did they give you a bus ticket to St. Louis? From uh, from St. Louis, well, from Marion to St. Louis, and one from St. Louis okay. to I Fresno, California. Yeah, I was, 
Right. There were two tickets, tickets last week. And uh, uh, oh, I'm I'm I, I'm in the bus, man, and I can see my reflection, and I got tears rolling down my eyes. I'm thinking about uh, Ghetto, uh, everybody I left back in the control unit. I'll never forget. I swear to God, I'm never going to forget uh, the control unit, what the fuck they did uh, to all of us, all of us, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, behavior modification, you know, and it's, it's really, uh, uh, I'll go into some later stuff because I really got into uh, uh, investigating the control unit from the outside, not from just from the inside. So anyway, uh, I, 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 I'm saying, my God, if I can fucking do something, I'm going to do it. If I got to go to the United Nations, I'll go to the United Nations. And, you know, I can't tell no one that, uh, anything like that or, you know, make some statement because it's so bullshit. You know how people always say, I'm going to do this and do that and all that. So, right. so uh, um, when we were driving into St. Louis, we, you know, we passed, get the bridge from East St. Louis, we get into St. Louis. I see a Goodwill store, and uh, uh, you, you know when, when, when the bus is driving, I see the Goodwill store only about four blocks from the bus from the bus depot. So you know I got like three and a half hours before I got to uh, catch my next bus to, to to go to the West Coast. So I, you know, uh, like a Ferris, like a big dog, you know, uh, going back. And I remember how to get. To that uh, that goodwill, and so when I got to the goodwill, I'm looking at clothes, and the woman looks at me, and uh, she says, "You were in Marion." Oh. <laughs> I look at <laughs> see this this scene before, you know, and so this woman, uh, she says, "Pick out some clothes, you know, uh, get a couple T-shirts and stuff like that. I'm going to trade you." Yeah, and uh, she knows I ain't got no money. You know, she said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train you. She said, it looks like a nice suit, and she cracks up, you know. I said, hey, man, you know. <laughs> she goes, I, I'm sorry, I tried off. But she said, I can't believe what they do to you guys, you know, uh, when you when you get out. So, you know, I picked out some jeans and some, some uh, uh, shirts and a couple of T-shirts, and uh, she said, you're going to need a jacket, too, you know. November, you know, that's so, that's so all. She gave me a jacket, and uh, uh, so I go back. Oh, and, and she gave me forty dollars. She did. Uh, gave me forty dollars. She said, uh, it, "Like I said, it's a nice suit." You know, she says it's a long trip back from California, and she gave me a hug. Yeah, you know? and I, yeah, I, 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 I felt like crying. <laughs> you know that. Uh, I feel like so crying just so hearing about it. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, uh, so uh, um, I, uh, uh, I go call my dad, uh, uh, you know, from uh, collect calls, you know, go phone booths. He'll have phone booths in them days. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> but, yeah, so I go to the phone booth, call my dad, and uh, I told him, yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to take a bus and go this long journey uh, Got about 30 stops uh, before I get to Fresno. He said, "No, no, no, go to the, go to the, um, uh, uh, take a cab and go to the uh, airport. I'm gonna get buy your ticket right now and get you the next flight." Uh, wow. You know, so I said, "Okay." He said, "Call me back as soon as you get to the airport. You know, uh, and, and check out the flight, so I will check for you." He says, I don't want you to miss your plane. And he says, bye-bye. So I got to, when I got to the airport, I told him, okay, here, there's a flight. He said, okay, I'm at the airport now. And so he said, okay, uh, you have to go to the, the uh, uh, Southwest Airlines. I forgot what it was. Go to the counter. You got a ticket waiting for you. And take you home. Flew back home. Yeah, as I you know, got there in a few hours. And he says, uh, what do you want to eat? I said, Mexican food. Sure. Took me to Castillo. Yeah, so we went, man. I had enchiladas, man. I ate it up good, you know. So uh, um, uh, 
I couldn't roll to my wife's house. It's uh, uh, that's it's like they told me I had to go to my dad's at first, and then the, you know my job would be we had a bar uh, that before. That's that's a whole different story. How I got to prison and beds in the first place, and uh, uh, and then I uh, I used to run. I had a lot of prostitutes. Uh, you know, before I got got busted, as uh, I just uh, you know, I, I, I didn't really consider myself a pimp. It's uh, uh, they fell into my lap. You yeah. Know, so you took care of your them. father owned a bar. We owned a bar that at least we were in Fresno, uh, and we had yeah no in Delray, Delray, Delray is in Fresno County, but uh, uh, it was my grandfather's bar. And then when my grandfather died, uh, the family, nobody wanted to move back to Delray. They all, after World War II, they all moved on and, uh, you know, had good jobs and good lives and everything from my mom's side of my family. And it's an all Mexican community, 100% Mexican in this town. And then uh, uh, we had like uh, uh, 22 bungalow, uh, you know, just one room to run were farm workers, you know, from, because uh, then you had the Brissetta law, and, and farm workers could come, because if, if you don't have farm workers, if you don't have people from Mexico uh, to work in the field, you don't have nothing to eat, it's for, for real. Uh, a white man, he can go out there and pick grapes, uh, go out and pick lettuce, and, uh, you know, work 16 hours a day in 110 uh, uh, degrees uh, for minimum wage below minimum wage, you know, so they would bring, uh, they would bring the Mexicans, you know, uh, uh, they were coming in for them. It's a, it was a good wage. So my dad, you know, would rent out, we started with my grandfather, rent out the room, room to them. My mom and my aunts and my grandma, they would make food and they, 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 that way they had a bag of lunch and then they would come home and there would be dinner, fresh tortillas and then at night man, they would be, Bring out their guitars and sing uh, <laughs> the cheras. And I, I grew up. That's the way. I mean, I grew up in Mexico. Yeah, uh, sure. But we, hey, but uh, 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 we're the first family to move into all neighborhood. Uh, neighborhood. Most of the kids were hard top, uh, uh, truck race driver? car drivers. They they had the Dixie mentality. Uh, so, uh, like the second day I'm riding my bike around the block and like five kids and says, Hey, you know, uh, go fucking back where you come from. If all the neighbors already heard of Mexicans moved into the neighborhood. I mean, so, so we went home. I, I, I told Chad this story. When we went home, uh, I went home, my dad saw that I was bruised up, you know, touched up a little bit. And he told me and my sister, and gave us baseball, to go back and find them. And come, don't come home till you kick the shit out of them. So I grew up fighting them guys all, all the time, you know. And uh, so uh, anyway, we got older. My grandfather died, and we moved back. You know? Well, my family moved back. I, I kept our house in, uh, in California. So then... Uh, 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 I robbed uh, the bank in that town two times. Uh, me and Billy Joe Noyden. Billy Joe Noyden, uh, he's a Native American guy, you know, from Oklahoma. And he was my crime partner. And he's like, uh, when we get into the, the Fresno versus Fresno, he's, uh, you know, with the same the same Fresno tattoo. Let like me see that Kenny, again. But... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it says Fresno. Okay. It says Fresno. Uh, but okay. the same letter. Yeah, the same letters. It's, it's, it's like there's a click. 50 of us, I'd say, that, uh, that have the same exact letter. Buzz did them all. And, uh, uh, I mean, we're all knew each other from juvenile hall and jail and then prison. Right. You know, we, uh, we would uh, uh, we'd be in jail. We'd pull robberies together, sell drugs together, uh, you know, party together. And so we was the Fresno kid. So yeah. uh, you know, and we always we always uh, backed each other's play. 
wherever we were at. You so, guys were the original Fresnecks, huh? Yeah, we used to call ourselves that. Fresnick? You know, and, 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 but, but as a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a joke. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and but we would say, uh, you know, we, we saw a member of the Fresnick so here, or the homie from the bird. We say Fresburg. That was uh, that was our town, Fresburg. Yeah. You know, instead of Fresno, we just it's just, just slang. You know, it was no click. Uh, you know, the thing that they got these podcasts. I mean, uh, uh, what I'm reading about these dudes and what some some of the homies are telling about these dudes. There's some riff rap. Yeah, you know, they that, are. That, that whole hey, that, they're riff rap. I mean, that, we had riff rap back in them days. We would, I mean, we would, uh, uh, we at least to support ourselves, we'd rob a bank. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the doctors go, you know, uh, uh, we wouldn't, those guys that would, uh, hey, save me some of the cotton. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Fuck. You know, you know, you know it's, yeah. Anyway, that's how I see these guys. And then, man, I mean, uh, 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 some of the leadership of that uh, uh, tying girls up, sh shooting them up with dope and then raking them. Uh, Whoever did you know, that? That's what we're going to. Uh, you know, no nah, man. We took we we took care of our homegirls. Right. Uh, we, well, those those are home. So you know, then then I look I look in the paper and there you know there's like a hundred they arrest a hundred. They got all these kids. Almost every one of them people, all they're doing is they're just girlfriends or uh, uh, you know the people who are using dogs. Uh, uh, you know, meth, uh, you know, a bunch of meth heads. It's, uh, you know, some of them you can see are junkies. Uh, you know, they're not um, a gang. You know, some of them guys, I guess, uh, you know, they've clicked up and uh, they're, uh, but uh, uh, I'll tell you what, the old, the old, uh, uh, the bird crew, the old Fresno, these guys that got the tattoo, take them out. You know, they take them out. So what happened? What so, so what happened after that? So, oh, uh, uh, so so anyway, uh, uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, 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 you know we uh, I've been getting in trouble all my life. You know, I was always fighting. I'm like 11 years old, uh, uh, going to going to juvenile hall, right? Uh, uh, you know, and then when I'm in juvenile hall, check it out. When I'm in juvenile hall. Uh, most of the Mexicans live on the west side, you know, what I mean? so they don't like me. Uh, uh, the first day I'm in juvenile hall, I'm getting some water, and the guy hits me in the back of the head and splits my lip on the on on, on the lip of the water fountain. It was full of water, and uh, I fire. I, I fight. I always knew how to fight from the day I could walk. My dad, you know, uh, taught me how to how, how to fight, and. Uh, uh, so then uh, I turn around and I I fight this guy and me and, this, me and him became enemies. His name his name Eddie Vindiola. He became the leader of the Nuestra Familia in Fresno. Okay. Uh, and then and then and then so so I fought, but then there was a few guys from the east side, uh, uh, Mexican guys later on that I met not till junior high school, you know, and uh, and, and they were having the same problem. And Martin Vargas, that's all. <laughs> yeah, and it's a, it's a trick because we grew up uh, with uh, uh, the guys who end up turning out to be A B, uh, and, and and I guess because uh, uh, you know, the, I mean, the very first time I walked into a prison, I'm not talking about juvenile hall. When I walked into prison was in Backerville for a ninety day observation. You know. And, uh, and and I'm thinking, oh fuck, you know. What I mean? And I ain't got a whisker on me. Uh, 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 you know, I'm not like 19 year old kid. You know. Right. And uh, uh, so, and the only thing I got is two. Which is huh? Blues, blues, yeah. And uh, sort of blue. People call me mean. They call me evil, but they can't see through this hard-headed shell, you know. Yeah. So anyway, 
and, 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 and so I actually can off run, you know what I mean? And so, uh, uh, you know, I might have problems and everything, but I know uh, what I will do. And I didn't know that they already knew what I would do too, because I'm there for stabbing a guy. And uh, uh, he, I stabbed this guy, Mike, that uh, he was a, uh, uh, he was he was rat, the largest LSD bust in Fresno. And uh, uh, they were all the Fresnex, I guess you call, you know, they're, they're all my, my partners. Right. You know, it's uh, me, me and another Mexican guy, Hank Rodriguez, used to bring in all the LSD. I would bring in all the weed from L.A. and from Mexico in, into Fresno. We were, uh, we, we didn't go to high school. There was our, yeah, you know, yeah. and we loved it. Yeah, we loved Hey Actor. We loved that whole yeah. free love, you know. Yeah. That whole scene, it was, uh, yeah, it yeah. was pretty good. So then, uh, so so uh, uh, I had been living uh, in in Haight Asbury. I moved to Lake Tahoe. Then I came back to Fresno uh, 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 because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some orders and then go uh, to Tecate, uh, uh, a Mexican border, and then I'm gonna bring back a whole bunch of kilos. I would buy kilos for twenty two. Twenty-eight dollars a kilo, two point two pounds of weed. I would then I would sell lids. Remember a lid? Uh, ten I, bucks. Uh, we, we, three finger lids. Three yeah. finger ten bucks. Three finger lids or four finger lids. It depends. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we clean out all the seeds. Remember you had all bunch of seeds and all that until Gatsu Loco. You know uh, he started the sense of me and he started growing. Uh, uh, Weed, uh, you know, like like the bud that you get today. So anyway, I would uh, uh, I I go to Bob's uh, Big Boy Drive-in where everybody would would hang out and everything, buy the drugs and uh, you know sell the drugs and and there was no heroin at all at that time. Right. Uh, I didn't come to that later until I went to CRC. Uh, uh, they put me in prison for having pills, and they put me in the prison with. 3,500 narcotic addicts. Yeah. Heroin addicts. That, you know, uh, you want some? So, you know, then I went into heroin. But anyway, so Mike, he jumps in the car with us, and everybody's telling me about Mike ratted on everybody. And, uh, you know, everybody's going to court. They're still trying to bail these guys out. So he gets in the car, and I tell him, hey, man, you know, get the fuck out of here. You know, you're a rat. And, uh, uh, so he knew we were going to go to a party. So we go to this party at uh, my friend Paul's house. And so Paul, uh, uh, we, he opens the door. We get in the door. I mean, the minute I walk in the door, bam, I get hit with a bottle of Red, red Mountain wine, you know, uh, uh, and, and it's Mike. You know, and he used to be like high school wrestling champ, champion, and uh, 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 he's fucking mauling the shit out of me. So I don't know how the hell I got out of it, and I ran in the kitchen. I got a big kitchen knife, and I, I stuck him, man, you know. And uh, uh, he's trying to pull the knife out, and I'm, I'm trying to hold the knife in him and twist twist the knife. And uh, uh, all of a sudden, he goes limp. So uh, uh, I throw him in the carpet. We roll up the carpet, and uh, uh, we throw him in the back of this uh, Paul's car, and I told Paul, uh, you know, go to uh, fry it down the lake and bury him, you know, uh, bury him deep. I got a big old gash on my head where he broke the bottle over my head. Well, Paul, when he's driving him uh, to go bury him, he hears him groaning. So he takes him to the veteran's hospital. He's not a vet. So he gets to the veteran hospital, he's still alive, and the first thing he said was, Bobby stabbed me. Oh, wow. <laughs> so they arrest me for assault with a deadly weapon. Fuck, man. I mean, I've, I've been lucky. My mom, she used to be the Spanish, uh, 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 what do you call it? The, the, she used to do the Spanish commercial for the district attorney when he was running for district, attor district attorney. My dad was a diesel mechanic. And, uh, and my dad's boss, uh, 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 Feely, uh, that owned a trucking company, he was married to the district attorney's wife. 
You know, uh, I mean, that his wife was the district attorney's brother. So, so my family had a little bit of connection. So they sent me to 90 day observation. Right. You know, I didn't, if, hey, if I would have been anybody else, you know, it is who you know. Excellent. Yeah. You know? It does happen. Yeah. And, yeah. And so, so I got a break. But the prisoners uh, there, no one's talking to me because they, you know, like, holy fuck, this guy, uh, you know, rolled him up. Uh, you know, he's got some treachery in him. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, I met, uh, you know, different people. And the guys I got along with the best, I mean, I, the homeboys, I had the homeboys. There was a guy, man. There was a guy, he had the same last name, similar. I'm not going to say his name because he might be alive today and married with kids or whatever, you know. And uh, uh, so I'm not going to say. But anyway, his name sounded just like the guy that I stabbed. Uh, so so when I go, when, 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 when they transport me, we used to, they used to fly us, transport, you know, from Fresno to, to Vacaville. And uh, uh, they put me, they, they put this guy on the plane with me. And the guy told me, hey, that the guy that ratted on you is going to be on the plane with you. And, uh, uh, you know, the whole time, uh, you know, I'm waiting for him. What happened, they told me, they told me, yeah, we, uh, because Fresno County Jail used to be segregated. You had, like, six cells, uh, and there's uh, 12 guys per cell. This is the, the new part of the jail. But each each one of those cells, like like two oh nine, was all white people, uh, and I was in Mexico. Oh, only Mexicans could be there, or others, you know. And, and then you had Africa. They had they never put us together. They kept us kept us separate. And uh, so so you know the white guys tell me said, hey, we got the fucking guy that ratted on you. You know he's in our cell. Uh, uh, we turned him out. He's up on the table dancer. We got him a long T-shirt where he's got to dance and all all the time. So this dude, this dude comes in, and uh, it's him. He's not the guy that ratted on me. He just got a, a name. Uh, you know, it's it wasn't the same guy. Name. No, the wrong. They just guy had the name. same name. <laughs> they fucked him up. Hey, so. <laughs> So, oh yeah, they raped him, you know, oh, wow. and, uh, turned him out. So we got to Dr. Bill. I try to tell people it's too late, you know, he's already, he punks a punk. Yeah. Know? So, you know, I couldn't do nothing for him. Felt bad, man. You know, so, so uh, I went to a 15 minute interview uh, with the psych, and uh, the psych said, he will kill somebody someday. So, one 15 interview, 15 minute interview. <laughs> I knew. And he came to the conclusion. You know, he, he, had, asked he, he was said, clairvoyant. <laughs> yeah, well, it, uh, yeah it, 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 I guess he was. He was right. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, cause he said, uh, Do you feel any remorse? I said, The motherfucker hit me over the head with a bottle. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. You know? He would, have, he would have killed me. So anyway, uh, um, I have a friend in the main line that I want to see. I grew up with this guy. And uh, uh, he went to Vietnam. He come back all fucked up, man. And uh, he he flipped out one day, and he threw a flower pot off his balcony, and it hit somebody. So they got him. And uh, uh, they're, they're, the, at that time, they used to do... Uh, lobotomies, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, uh, drill a hole in their head, and they're doing him. So I get word to him, uh, come to the chapel, because the main line can come with the guidance center, and we can go to church together. So he come in there, and uh, uh, I had seen him, and I tried to call him, and he didn't, uh, uh, he didn't recognize me. He's picking up cigarette butts, you know. I'm thinking, oh, fuck, man, he's, uh, he's a good, good dude. Used to be, you know. So anyway, he come. We go to the church together, and uh, uh, he's sitting at like the, the front row. And uh, they, that guy coming, hey, he's up here, you know. Uh, uh, you know, there are some some people in the main line that helped me out. 
so I could help them give them some cigarettes and some, you know, some stuff. So anyway, when, when I'm sitting in church, I all of a sudden I hear this woman choir. And I was, they're singing beautiful, you know, and I turn around, they're fucking beautiful. I'm thinking, shh, you know, and I said, they let these women in here? And the guy tells them, they made women do it. <laughs> no, I said, oh, you know, they, it was not like some of the things that we saw in the federal penitentiary. They had, uh, uh, you know, the San Francisco friends, uh, uh, to, you know, they would make puppets. Do what he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were in jail. Yeah. Were they? Oh, but they weren't. They weren't. They weren't inmates, though. They were prisoners. They were prisoners. Oh, they were. They, they were people. Oh, this was, was like the, this was in Vacaville. This was in Vacaville. Vacaville. I heard about it. I yeah. heard. I heard about Vacaville, man. Yeah. I heard they Vacaville. were. I heard they were uh, slamming them. Hey, hey, when I got the long pole, huh? I, I we had Patty Puke. Uh, there was a uh, Fred Flintstone and tons of fun. Uh, I mean, there was the most horrible. I don't know how anybody, you know, could. Uh, tons. They sent tons to Leavenworth eventually. Oh, you heard? Yeah, of tons yeah, yeah, of yeah, yeah. Tons went to Leavenworth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Fred Flintstone. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so so uh, um, I got out. They they, they gave me uh, uh, a couple of years of probation, and uh, uh, you know I uh, uh, you know stayed in Fresno. Then uh, you know we uh, my dad, uh, my mom uh, got really sick, and uh, I uh, you know I was always picking up a possession of marijuana and. Uh, uh, drugs and uh, you know then uh, we moved to San Diego and then I was getting busted and same thing in San Diego and uh, we lived in uh, in Sherman but it's Logan Heights you know that area of Logan Heights and then you know uh, my first couple of days I'm out walking and some of the Logan you know they I got jammed up you know who the fuck are you where are you from and everything and uh, so I went down, and a bunch of them uh, came to my porch, and they came out with my gun, and my dad, you know, grabbed me, and he told them, dudes, he said, hey, you don't know who you're fucking with. You know, <laughs> he'll, he'll fucking kill all of you. You know, my dad got to understand me, you know. He raised me. So then uh, 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 some, some, uh, some of the older guys, they came, you know, they checked me out, they, you know, they, they talked to me, where are you from, man? The only, the only day it is, I said, I'm from Fresno, but we moved down here. Uh, and uh, uh, um, you fought these dudes, man? You know, there's like six of them. And I said, yeah, you know, it's a, uh, it's a fuck, dude. You know? So they, they liked me. Yeah. You know, these dudes, uh, uh, as I was in, so I went to, uh, you know, San Diego County Jail. It was already so. Uh, I uh, I got along good with them dudes. Then I got sent to CRC and uh, uh, from San Diego, and uh, uh, I got I mean I got along with the uh, Fresno homeboy, but there was Crackers brother. There was some uh, uh, the kick, these guys later on turned out to be the Western Familia. We. We had we had uh, problems, but I always, you know, uh, they learned not to fuck with me. You know, just so uh, 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 I don't. So you know, where did Nostra Familia begin at? Did it start in Fresno? I don't know where it started. Uh, uh, I mean, in prison, it started in in prison to uh, basically defend themselves against the Mexican mafia. You know. Yeah, the Southerners. Uh, yeah. But see, 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 see. This, this is what I hate when I hear, you know, I, I mean, I like Chad, but he always talks about numbers. You know, you got the numbers, you, you're just trying to fuck that. You know, I mean, Mexican Mafia never relied on numbers. You know, this, uh, uh, the Nuestra Familia relied on numbers. You get too many numbers, you got too many rats. 
you know, and then, and, 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 and you know, uh, you know, that was, uh, yeah, I know, so Mexican mafia, you fire. had a, you had a, sh you really had a shine to be in the mafia, you know, you really had a, you, you know, then I hear guys, uh, uh, some of these guys on, on YouTube, uh, I won't, I, I'm not going to burn them, you know what I mean, but they're Nortenios, you know, and they come from that, one was the Western Familia, turned out to be a rat, and they put so much, you know, how the Mexican mafia is, Hey, Daniel, and you do something, you know what the fuck you're doing. You know, and, and uh, uh, you can do t all kinds of shit for the Mexican Mafia. You ain't going to be Mexican Mafia unless they like you. Right. Uh, they got to they gotta like you. Right. You know, if, if you ain't got that uh, uh, personality, if you ain't got that, if there's any doubt, you ain't never going to get in. You know, and uh, I mean, there's been some. Uh, uh, some of the turns, you know, down the road. Did you uh, ever? Yeah, but, uh, did you ever meet uh, uh, what the fuck's his name? The one that flipped on uh, Joe Morgan and them. Uh, you know who I'm talking about? Yeah, it's, uh, he's he's got station. Uh, he's got a station of uh, of his own. He tells a lot of stories and shit. He had. He, he had. He was a good. He was a good. He, he gave. You know. Uh, I, I hate. You know that police fire, it came back up. There's another doing do, do it. And, uh, but he's got pretty much all that uh, that info. It's, uh, God. What the fuck is his he's name? He's the main guy that warned me. I don't know why. I, I, I know his name every day. Yeah, I know. Just right now. It's, like, it's uh, oh. it'll come. It'll come. Yeah, it'll come. Yeah. It'll come this week. It's uh, uh, he told some bullshit yeah, stories that's, that's too. He, he well, uh, I know some of the shit he's talking to ain't, ain't for real. I know some of that. See, 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 this, this is the thing is uh, uh, Big D and Two Roy, uh, they didn't rule, they didn't, they didn't snitch, right. you know, and, 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 and uh, they, they're Christian. When I hear, when I see the guys who snitch. And become Christian. They become Christian because they're snitches, and, they're, and they need a place to hide. You know, uh, uh, you know. It's, uh, uh, that's the way I see it. You know, I may be wrong and everything, but I, that, that's just the way I feel. You know, they're hiding from something, and that was that was yeah, a, that's just a, a way that's just out. A, yeah, it's just a place to hide. Kilroy, yeah. Me, me and Kilroy, me and Kilroy, he would tell me uh, 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 because he knew he knew I was a brother. You know, he was always a brother. He he never quit. You know, like me. He just, uh, you know, uh, I mean, there's 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 quite quite a few guys. And, uh, Willie Bobo used to tell me stories of dudes that, uh, hey, you know, you know, they're not involved. In they got a good life. They're married, man. I really, you know, we pray for them. We really, you know, and there was. Uh, uh, People get the wrong idea. Uh, uh, I mean, don't fuck with Mexican mafia. He's a goddamn fool. You do, but I mean, there are some good human beings, man. You know. Did you I know Chan? I'm never gonna. Yeah, I met Chan. I, I, I mean, we wouldn't uh, tighten or anything because uh, I met him in the visiting room in Lompoc, you know, a couple times. So. It's, you know, they were they, they were on that beef. Uh, they, they sent me a photo. I'll, I'll send you that photo. Uh, uh, there was uh, everybody. There was Chap, Black Bob, Black, and uh, and Willie really Bobo, and Baby Steve. Baby Steve was a rat. And uh, uh, they sent me that photo before me. And, uh, they gave it to Sopo. Sopo brought it, and they, you know, that it was signature for me. And they wrote in the back, uh, Black Bob. Me, me and Black Bob. Uh, uh, we're close, you know. I got along with Black Bob, and uh, uh it, and it was mostly just from communicating, shooting kites and everything. But we were that was how I communicated mostly through Black Bobby, right? Love Black Bob, man. Uh, I think he's Black, dead, right? Black is a, huh? I think he's he died, yeah, yeah. Willie's still alive. 
Willie Bobo still alive? Willie Bobo, he got out in uh, in uh, 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 what, what do they call that? The passionate uh, release. Compassionate release. Well, he's yeah. an old man now. He's older than you. Oh uh, no, we're the same age. Isn't he? Exactly. Really? Hey, me, me, Barry, Kento, uh, uh, all of us were born within a month of each other. Okay. What are you now? 73? 74? No, uh, 89, I think. Uh, Willie Bobo? No, how old are you now? Oh, I'm 75. I'll be 76. In oh, a couple months. okay. Oh, wow. All right. I thought you were younger. Yeah, that's why. That's why you were a, you're a youngster. Yeah. Yes. If it's a me back then, you would be a youngster. Yeah. Yeah. So tell yeah, us now, dead, but, man. so tell us what happened, man, like how you met your wife and all that shit, man, because, I mean, you you, uh, you, you never went well, back to prison. Way, you, you, that was way, way later, way, way later. But you went, you never went my, back to prison. My first wife, no, never, never, uh, well, I went to jail a couple of days, your, your screen falls. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're back up. You're, uh, when, when, uh, uh, when, oh, because we had talked about how I got out of the fertile, I got married. And then, uh, uh, you know, I guess she thought I was going to never get out because my crime partner, he fucked it up for me. My, uh, uh, yeah, he wasn't really from New York, but Rocky, his, uh, his other, uh, uh, his partner, uh, you know, uh, they good dude, but he was my partner. When I got to Long Park, uh, uh, the day I got to Long Park was from from like Neil Island. You know that uh, uh, just a couple of weeks before I got to uh, Neil Island is uh, uh, John Abel got to just a couple of weeks before me. When when I go, I was a, I was the youngest guy there, and uh, uh, and and, and, and uh, I loved Mac Neil. Yeah. I, I met Joe Weinstock with a French connection. This guy, Dick Dooley, he was a pilot from, you know, a homeboy that was smoking and drugs. I was meeting guys that I, this, my life where I was going, you know, this is, this is where I need to be. This is where I'm going to learn. Right. You know, my, my profession right there. So when I got to Law Park, I mean, that's why I'm going to send you for you to, if we will do more things. I'm going to send you stuff. My progress report. And they talk about when I first arrived in Lompo, you know, that, uh, uh, that, that I was going to fuck this place up myself. The Lord. All right. <laughs> a gun so he's the guy that fucks up, you know. Right. And a low rider, I wanted to go back to McNeil Island. And, uh, uh, but then uh, uh, I started, you know, getting involved in programs and stuff like that. But then I had an incident report for fighting, another incident report for fighting. Uh, you know, multiple, multiple incident reporting for fighting. Uh, DC blocks. Oh. I, 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 didn't, I didn't have problems with California blocks. You know, then, then I really want to talk. I didn't like, I didn't like the way I was questioned with Chad. You know, because it really made me look like a racist. You know, uh, uh, you know, the whole thing with Fly. Fly's a fucking punk. He's a lying dude. But the way that whole thing come down, I didn't, Hey, I, I now I got to go get my board. That's why I told you Tuesdays was a bad day, day for me. It's uh, I got the ten minutes I got to take off. Okay, yeah, so I got to do too. Yeah, so we'll finish this, but yeah. we'll 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 do some more shit later in the in the week or something. Yeah, because uh, uh, you you uh, you you got Polly. Polly can. I think he can help you edit and put things together. He just uh, he just yourself. texted me just now. That's your, yeah, he just texted me right now. He's got the pictures. I yeah. just sent him all the pictures and everything. So, well, I'm going to send you more because I, I you know like I have I have a bunch where I'm getting like in uh, I'm in Norway, I'm in Austria getting the Human Rights Award, many photographs of me in the United Nations uh, when I'm when I'm speaking. It's uh, uh you. Know, Nobody, nobody ever believed that someone like us could. could uh, Bro, how long have you been in Europe? How, how many years have you lived in Europe now? Altogether. Well, since 
uh, since uh, 19, when did, uh, you said, you said 911, 2001. That's 2001. 2009, right. I, I got put in a no-fly list. I was put in a no-fly list. Okay. It's, uh, 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 and uh, I got stuck in Europe. I couldn't go back home. Uh, uh, I was homeless on the streets. Really? Walking around Europe. Oh, fuck. It was a long time, man. And, uh, uh, and, and I, I, I got married to a Swiss girl, and that didn't happen. I, I was married a lot of times, dude. Wow. <laughs> I was like a sailor. You know, like I said, I traveled. <laughs> you know, so how did you make a living uh, while you were over there? I mean, did you do what? Well, at, at, at first, man, I would uh, uh, go to the train station. I got a drunk. And then you know, I, I stayed native songs and stuff. I'm a, I'm a sun dancer. Okay. You know what a, you know, a sun dancer Yeah, I've heard of him. I'm a sun dancer. You know, we, we got a, you know, we got a puncture, uh, we got to hang from a tree. Uh, uh, you know, we, hey, we dance from sunrise to sunset, no food or water. Right. Uh, four days, no food or water. And, uh, and after the fourth day, uh, we have these ropes tied to the tree. We got to put a peg uh, through through our chest, both both sides, and hangs in the tree to the flesh breaks. God damn. Uh, no food, no water. Yes. And four years, you know, you know, I didn't uh, for five years, and then so then it, it makes me a pipe turn. I should I can need ceremonies and all that. Well, anyway, anyway, I uh, uh I would uh, spin, you know, and uh, uh man, I would get I get enough money, and then I would go to a youth hostel. And to go shower and, uh, 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 you know, uh, sleep, maybe have a place to sleep. And, uh, you know, before I didn't want to do that, but, man, I, it was cold. Winter in Switzerland, the Alps, is cold as fuck, you know. So I, you know, hey, this, this is the way. And then uh, I met, uh, uh, you know, I had, I, had, I had gotten married to a Swiss girl, but we split. We, we, we split and... Uh, uh, I uh, uh, I got kicked out. She she wanted me out, uh, and uh, so uh, the Swiss police they got my FBI file. Holy fuck! You no, know? I mean, Grand Theft Autos, assault with a deadly weapon, uh, you know, uh, manslaughter, bank robberies, yeah. armed robberies, uh, you know, all that. And so they kicked me out of Switzerland, but I uh, 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 I had nowhere to go. Uh, the United, I was on the no-fly list. The United States wouldn't take me back. Then Obama become president, you know. Who? And I had won. Obama, yeah. That, that, yeah, so when Obama become president, uh, I wrote to Nancy Pelosi and Diane Feinstein. And I I won the Nick of Time Award, uh, uh, hero, actually. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Remember the earthquakes, 1989, uh, uh, Loma Prieta, big earthquakes in San Francisco. Yeah. You know, I got all kinds of rewards. I mean, I went into buildings and pulled people out. Really? Of uh, buildings that were, were, that were collapsing. I worked like five days straight, man. It was, uh, it was fucked up, man. I pulled, uh, 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 I had to go in and uh, firemen said, you know, no, they wouldn't go. I went in anyway, and uh, uh, you know, Doug, because the woman was crying about her baby. We, the baby was dead, you know. And so, anyway, uh, uh, and, and before that, uh, there was this purse snatcher. You know, I'd already had my I'd run my gang program, and this purse snatcher, he robbed this woman from uh, stole her purse, and he had her down. He was raping her, and uh, 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 so people already called. I jumped over the fence. I kicked this fucker in the head, you know, and I get him out, and he uh, was, he got a knife. And, uh, if he could have, he could have stabbed the woman. This guy was on escape, uh, for killing a woman. He had, he had like multiple. Uh, he was a serial rapist. Okay. And so, 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 so the, when the cops come, you know, I'm being him. We're fighting. So they arrest me, you know, because now I got the knife. Mm -hmm. you know? So they arrest me. And the woman screaming, no, 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 he's the one who helped me. And they, you know, they're, uh, uh, 
they think that the rapist because he's fucked up. <laughs> you know, I don't want to stab, but I'm fucking him up. Right. And so, uh, so, so then they put the handcuffs on me and take the handcuffs off, and, and they make me a fucking hero. Uh, I wasn't trying to get him for the police. I'm dead. I'm stopping a rape, man. You you hear a woman uh, uh, getting raped? It's fucking instinct. Yeah. So they right. gave me they, they they gave me a hero. So so uh, uh, when uh, when when Bush was president, they wouldn't help me get off. Uh, they wouldn't even tell me I'm in a no fly room. So so uh, Nancy Pelosi was my congresswoman, and Diane Feinstein became a U.S. senator, and they they helped me get off the no fly list because I got ran over and I need to go back to the U.S. For surgeries, right? I can get at Social Security and that. I needed, I needed a whole health, a, a bunch of surgeries. So, uh, 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 so, so in that time, in that time, you know, while I'm, while I, while I'm fighting all that, I, I, I'm at the United Nations, and uh, I'm in this conference, and uh, 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 I see this, I see this woman, man. I'm thinking, holy shit beautiful yeah and uh so so that night there's a party there's a party and my son uh my son is talking to her uh uh, uh and uh he uh, uh they come and they ask me there's a whole bunch of them you know that are, that are part of a delegation and uh they asked me where where are bars uh, you know where can we go to a bar i said this is switzerland man you know, this is like Catholic country. Uh, uh, there ain't no bars open on Sundays in Switzerland. Oh, uh, really? They I didn't shut know down that. everything. Huh? I didn't know yeah, that. It's, uh, yeah, it's yeah. Uh, they they shut it down. And I says, uh, look at. I says, uh, a friend of mine let me use her apartment. You know, to stay, and uh, uh, we can go there. So then, uh, uh, you know. So she comes, this, uh, uh, this woman's with, you know, with my son and my son, you know, this whole group and everything. So the next day, I'm, uh, I'm talking to this, uh, uh, this, this woman from Corsica, you know, uh, believe me, the Indians in Europe have action, you know, <laughs> with women. <laughs> oh, yeah. So anyway, I'm talking to this, this woman from Corsica. And then that blonde comes, uh, she goes, oh, hi, you know, she, she was with my, with my son. So we're talking and we're talking and she's telling me her story. And I thought she's just straight up German and she's born in Algeria and she's Moroccan and, and German. And, uh, and, 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 but she's actually, uh, a, 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 a Berber, you know, ethnic Moroccan. And I said, wow, a Berber, a Berber, yeah, yeah. Interested. I know yeah. what they are. So, so, so that's why she's, she's interested in the indigenous, indigenous people thing. This is your so wife. Sick, this is your wife. Your this wife's going to become my wife. This yeah. one, this one today, the one you're living with. Yeah, that I have not. Yeah, we've been together since. Uh, she's a Berber. Yeah. You know, she's a Berber. She's a Berber. Okay. Berber and and German. I got a friend who's a Berber. He's over there now in Morocco. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her, she still got her family over there. They're like one hundred percent Berber. So, and she got a twin. No shit. She's, yeah, she's a twin. And uh, uh, so anyway, it's uh, uh, she told me that she's getting her master's degree and she's gonna be uh, going to. Uh, 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 you know, finish school at uh, in uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. Okay. And I thought, oh, shit, man, because uh, I, I'm a, I, 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 I'm attracted big time to her. Yeah. And uh, so you know, I tell her, you know, hey, I, I can contact you with some people you should go see because uh, if you really want to get your master's in anthropology, you need to talk to the natives. Not the books, you know. And so I'm, I'm hooking her up with a, a whole bunch of stuff. And she said, "Oh, you know, I'll come and visit you uh, in Switzerland." But now, now it's by this time 
I had to work out and I, I got a place and I was put in like a refugee getting social service and uh, 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 you know I, I, now I got a, now I got, I'm renting uh, you know I got my own little apartment up in, in a place called Valley de Jou up in the mountains of the Jura Mountain really and uh, I, I, I I love it. I love it the mountain. Like, like, like outside this window, there's just one big mountain. This is the Alps, and it's flat. It's a huge flat mountain. You got. Oh, you're living in the. You're living in the Swiss Alps, aren't you? Another time. <laughs> uh, I got. I'm in. Uh, I'm in the French Alps now. French Alps. From the Swiss Alps. Same thing. Yeah, you're, you're right across the, the border. This, this, uh, uh, twenty minute drive. I could be in the Swiss Alps. You know. God, so yeah. uh, anyway, and then and, and then uh, an hour and a half drive. Like you can get here. Listen, bro. Oh, fuck yeah, I'm late. I'm, We're gonna I'm talk late. again. When do you want to call? I'll call you what? Thursday? Today's okay, uh, today's Tuesday. Thursday. Thursday in the morning, the same time. Thursday. Yeah, that works because I can have a good hour. Uh, you know, interruptions and. Okay. You know, Monday, Thursday. Today was lucky because my boy. At four fifty, and my girl got out two hours early today. Okay. So and she she got she's the old talk. She knows my life. Okay. My my older girl. She she knows. Is she, that, uh, that's your biological uh, daughter. She, yeah, they're my. Uh, I mean, I was in my in my sixties, uh, oh, still man. having kids. You, wow, dude. I, hey, hey, I'm I'm still healthy. I'm uh. You know, <laughs> Thank you, God. I guess it was the. Those years that they took away from me. It's uh, yeah. I mean, I got I got kids in their forties and uh, a kid eight years old. Wow, you're blessed, bro. You had a good uh, life. I mean, some of it was crazy, but you. I mean, you you came out on top. You haven't been in prison for what 40, 40 over forty years. You. Well, I gotta tell you, I went briefly to jail, and the next time. Remind me to talk about that. Okay, let's close uh, this down right now because I got to get going and so do you, bro. All, all right. right. We'll talk again on Thursday, bro. Thursday. Okay, bro. Good to talk to you. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.